Average at Best Cornhole. We're back again. Today we have some bags from Ultra Cornhole. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, new butterflies, trying to compare them with the uh, Viper R's. Uh, yeah, super excited to review these. Um, most of you guys know these are some of the hottest bags. You go to a Switch or any local tournament, and you're probably going to see more Vipers than any other single bag out there. So um, we uh, picked up a few sets, see what it's all about. We're going to get right into scoring these bags uh, for the new Butterflies. I actually graded them a three-bagger, and the Viper R's, I'm going to give them a two-bagger. The reason is, I mean, it, it's an iconic design. It's got the Viper head on the front, but it's kind of getting a little outdated now. You know, they've pretty much had the same design on these for a few years now. But the Butterflies, they come out with those, and I'm an engineer by trade, and all the gears and stuff in the wings, and I mean, it's really cool design. And the print, I mean, it prints perfect on that butter material. Oh, yeah, best I've seen. Um, for me, it's I'm going a three and a half on the uh, butterflies. For one is the quality of how they print on this material. It's the best looking I've seen. It's the clearest, most detailed. Uh, it almost looks like you're looking at, you know, the, the screen when you see it when you're ordering it from the website. It looks just as good when it shows up. So that was amazing. That kind of blew me back a little bit because I wasn't expecting it and haven't seen a bag that good. Um, I'm with Craig on the regular Vipers, just, you know, I'm going to score them a two on the design. I like the design. I mean, their standard logo, the snake's pretty cool. It's better than, you know, a lot of, um, other logos out there, but I've mentioned in other videos, I'm not huge on them just putting their brand logo on it. I'm into cool prints, uh, like we see on the butterflies here. And I'm also a mechanic by trade. So the gears and stuff are right up my alley. So I love that bag. So as soon as he actually picked them up and as soon as I grabbed them, I'm like, these are going to be mine one day. So. Yeah, and if you could let us know, we, we don't have any other butter bags, and we're looking to get a set yeah, now yeah. just because we've seen that on there, yep. but they only have the basic uh, prints out right now, so hopefully Ultra drops something neat, yep. and we get a set of the regular butters, because we already got a set of the regular Vipers, and yep. maybe yep. we compare those also. Yeah, so look for that in a future video. Ultra, if you happen to come across this, we need uh, more prints on the, uh, the non-fly versions of the butters. So availability. These bags are always available. Every time I log on the website, they're always available. They're constantly coming out with new color schemes and stuff for the, uh, you know, the traditional Viper R's. Uh, there's a new one up now. I think it's red and gold. It's a pretty sharp looking bag. Uh, they're always available. The same with the butters. You know, there's no problem getting them, getting them when you need them. And they are coming out with better designs for the Viper R's now. I think there's a blue Viper snake wrapped yep, around yep, and, yep. and a red one also. So. They are getting away from their traditional design, which, I mean, I kind of like that. Yeah, they need to. I've been waiting for that. Um, I have the, the non-R Vipers, you know, with the snake print on one side and then a coiled snake on the other side. And I've been waiting for, you know, them to start putting that on the R's rather than just their, you know, standard look. Get into the cost of these and with our scoring on those, I'm going to give the Viper R's really a three. They're a little bit on the high side, depending on when you buy them versus, you know, when they first launch uh, versus after that, you know, design's been out for a little while. But just for how many people like to play these bags, how often you see them and how good of a bag um, they are for most of us, you know, even with it being, you know, I'd say upper middle tier on the pricing. It is, yes. Yeah. You know, I'm still going to go with a three on that. Um, the butters just kind of fall in the same category. Yeah, you got to make sure to get the both sets of bags as soon as they drop. Um, Ultra does something where they have a release price and then, you know, after they come out with the next design or color, they raised the price up a little bit. And I think that was from <clears throat> back in like the COVID days when people were jacking up the secondary market. Ultra actually did that to keep their prices on the second market down because yeah. the bags were still available also. Well, that's that's pretty consumer friendly. It's pretty you neat. Don't see that neat enough, yeah. Every other company went the opposite direction. <laughs> exactly. They wanted to get their piece and prices went up. So. so wait for a release and then purchase it then if you're thinking about if you're in the market for one of these bags. Just to touch base on Ultra a little bit more, uh, I mean, they're one of the well-known companies. Top three, four, I would say, out of all the bag makers. Yeah. So there's no surprises there. Uh, I haven't had much interaction with their company because I haven't needed other than purchasing bags. And shipping's fast. Yeah. Like I said, I think when they release, you know, those designs, they already have them pre-made, so they're going to ship them out immediately, which is nice. Uh, they do have a website. We'll definitely be putting the link below. It's uh, ultracornhole.com. And if you go on Facebook, they have their own Facebook page, which is just at Ultra Cornhole. And then there's a fan group, uh, the Ultra Fan. But if you get in that group, they actually give you uh, – pre-release information on their bags so you're going to know when they're coming and, I, yeah. and they might even give you an opportunity to purchase them before they're uh, open available to the regular public yeah you'll at least find the drop time so you know if you really want them you can be there waiting for them as soon as they drop 
We didn't do much to them. They don't need much. Uh, if you do purchase a set of these brand new, you'll find out. I, I don't think they need any chemicals at all. Just a hot water soak and uh, low heat tumble dry gets them perfect. Uh, I've actually played with bags that switches and whatnot, other people's bags. That, yeah. They were just too broken in. I, I don't know. There's like a fine line of the perfect bag and then these bags being way too broken in. And I've come across a couple of those. Still good quality, but I don't know. It felt yeah. mushy or something. That's, that's my, the word I was going to use. So, I, and that's my least favorite bag to throw is the over broken in bags. It just always messes with my hand feel, and I'm mm -hmm. trying different grips, and it just goes south from there. So, um, as much as I like playing with the Vipers, sometimes it switches. If I get paired with somebody that's, you know, his bags are just been played forever. They. Uh, they break in pretty heavily, so I prefer more of that mid break in with these. And uh, that's uh, I've actually had these money greens for a while, and they are money. And I didn't do any chemicals to them. I don't practice with them. I don't throw them, you know, outside of going to switches or whatever. In case someone does want to throw them, then I know they're still good. Yep. All right, getting into the the baggage here on these. First, we're going to talk about the speeds. Uh, I think they're all rated at nine five, right? Yep. Uh, there's different different variations in the speeds just for me throwing them. I feel like the butters were a little bit faster. Not a lot, but um, enough for me to notice it. So there's definitely some speed differences there on those. And we ran them down the ramp, and the slow side was a tad bit faster, and the fast side was actually significantly faster, I felt. Yeah. And then we also ran the green uh, Viper R's with the red Viper R's, and the greens were a little bit faster, and I always felt that they played faster yeah. than any other Viper R bag I've thrown. Yeah, and they're more broken in than the... Uh, they are, yes. Which you would think would be the other way. The more broken in bag would be a little slower. We experience a lot with carpet bags, but not the case on these. Materials, you're not going to find much of a difference other than the fast side, which we touched on earlier. Uh, they both have the Yar carpet, which all the companies are trying to copycat now. Yep. And then they have the uh, real famous Viper fast side, which is the same as the Pro Sniper Fast Side, uh, Buffalo Deadhead Fast Side. The only difference is the butter. It has the butter Fast Side, which I, yeah. I, I actually did some research, and I couldn't find any other bag that used that material. I, like I said, I haven't seen anything. I mean, just visually, I can, I, you can see it right away. I don't know how well you guys can see this bag here, but you can just see how how good that print is and how it feels. If there is another bag with this uh, material on it, uh, comment down below, let us know, because we'd love to get our hands on it. Yeah, the templates on these bags, it's a, it's a Viper R template. I mean, it's a larger template. Now we did notice that the butters were about an eighth inch thicker when we measured them, which we kind of felt that when we were throwing yeah. them. And they were they're less floppy and they weigh two grams more than the Viper R's. Now two grams isn't a lot, but I mean, that's where that extra eighth inch of thickness is coming from, I do believe. Yeah, it never sounds like much, but it, it makes a difference. And uh, that thickness is why I think I prefer the butters after playing with them. Yeah, so it, it, if you've ever thrown a Viper R's and you're like, man, these are just way too floppy for me, try the butters because they are a little less floppy and a little bit thicker. So to touch on the bagmanship, it's ultra. Uh, they're pretty famous. I mean, they have real high quality. The, the closing seam is like kind of all the way yeah. on the edge. That's the that's the tightest closing seam I've ever seen before, which is pretty neat. And all the bags are like that. I actually, for some reason, I've always questioned the durability on these Viper R's, but they haven't let me down yet. And like we were speaking earlier, you know, we got to switch and you play with someone's bags that are, you know, just feel super mushy. You can tell they've been thrown thousands and thousands of times, but the bag still looks great. It's just too broken in. And it actually held up, which I was kind of surprised about. Yeah, I, I think the you know the quality is great on these. Like you said, we've seen them so broken in. I mean, you'll see the seam stretch and stuff, but I mean that's normal. You play a bag all the time; that's going to happen. So getting into the slide up, how these bags play, they they're forgiving. They're super forgiving. Uh, the floppiness of them uh, really helps take out of that kick and stuff. Now with the the new butterflies. A little bit of that forgiveness, I think, leaves a little bit. I was getting so a little more kicks than I wasn't, or you know, than I was with the Vipers. Not a huge difference, though. You know, just a little bit. Um, Any fuller bag is going to kick a little yeah. bit more than a floppier bag. All these bags have this fill, so that's going to alleviate kick. And yeah. I, I, what he's talking about is so minimal, and it, it might have happened every once in a while. Yeah. It, it's not an issue. Yeah, it, it's really not. The consistency of, of each of them, though, is makes up for it. And, and both materials are so fast that, I mean, you get it near the hole and it's going to fall down in there. 
which is nice. It's it's really going to make an average player play a little bit better. Yeah, they're super consistent with the speed. Um, once you get kind of dialed into the boards that you're playing with, you can expect the same, you know, run up the board every single time. They're some of the most consistent bags as far as speed's concerned that I've played with yet. And that's probably why they're so popular and everybody's using them. They get dialed in on them. They don't want to throw anything else. And they go in the hole. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. I mean, and that'll take us right into the whole bodiness on these. And they're vipers. And anywhere near the hole, it's going in. You know, unless there's a, a blocker or something – you know, in your way, you just touch that hole with a corner. I mean, yeah. so many times that, you know, I thought I had him on the ropes. He's playing those and he just touches the hole. And Yeah, my, my favorite shot with these is, is if I'm throwing inside arm, for some reason my throw, I can get it to cut a little bit to the right. So if there's anything in front of the hole, it, and it's the only bag that I've noticed this on, I can almost get it every single time where I just step out a little bit swing right around and it catches swings almost all the way around that hole and falls in it's impressive it makes me look good yeah it makes me you know look like i know what i'm doing even though it's probably luck most of the time but i think so <laughs> yeah that's all right <laughs> but uh also i mean if you get a hanger on there um you know because of how floppy and loose they are and the speed of the materials if you get one that's just hanging just somebody hitting the board and stuff you may see that slide in which you know, we don't see it with, you know, like a herringbone carpet and stuff. I, I don't see those fall in like that quite like these do. Yeah, I also like I found that when, when I'm playing these uh, Viper R's, if I can just, you know, throw them a little bit lighter and get like maybe one or two kind of scattered in front of the hole, it's going to mess my opponent up because they're going to get nervous thinking I got a blocker up there. And then they're so easy to collect. You just throw it. Everything kind of punches, crumbles in a ball and goes right down in the hole. So, I mean, they got that going for them, too. Really good at collecting. Yeah, I agree as well. That's a big part of how I measure bags because if, if I hit my collect, I need it to go in because I only hit I mean, one out of four. So, uh, when I do hit it, I need them to collect and go in, and these do a fantastic job at that. Um, they just, you know, part of maybe that floppiness on them, they just grab each other and they just they go where they need to. It's almost like they just you know, know the, know the way home. It's a cheater bag for sure. Yeah. And a, a good thing about a bag that's that easy to collect for you is that it's also that easy for your opponent to collect it too, even though they don't want to. Right. So if you kind of scatter some of these bags up there and they're off a little bit, or they need to run right through you and go to the hole, I mean, you're guaranteeing your bag's going to go in the hole also with them. Capable shots. These bags can do it all. Um, for somebody as average as I am at throwing cornhole bags, I can, once I find my rhythm with these, like Craig said earlier, I, I can hit that cut to the right, you know, if I'm throwing over the board pretty consistently. And there's only a few bags that I've felt that comfortable with. I uh, still can't roll the bags. I've tried with these. If once I learn, I'm sure that, you know, these they are pretty rollable. I don't know if the butterfly would be better at rolling just because of the little Probably extra little thickness bit. and stuff, you know. You might be able to get that angle you're looking for a little better. But otherwise, they're, they're capable. You block with them. You know, I don't think there's anything better, you know, just sliding hole for hole than these. Uh, That's primarily what you're going to do with these right. bags. Maybe an accidental block or even a third bag block. But, I mean, these bags are made to run the hole. Yep. That's what you're going to want to do with them. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy at our local switch I was just talking to him before we started this video that, you know, runs these. One of the older broken insets. But dude's money, man. He's got his spot, and he just runs them in the hole. All yeah, day. it's like he puts them at the front of the board, too, and they yeah. just spin and slide all the way up. Right, yeah, he's really good with them. So I want to see that dude play with some other invitors, honestly. <laughs> all right, getting to know our final thoughts on these bags and our personal scoring on them. Uh, I want to say two and a half on the Viper R's, but I'm going to go with a three just because they're, they're iconic, and you can't go wrong with them. The quality's there. They can make every shot. It's just a little too floppy for me. Uh, for the way I like them. I'm actually going to go a three and a half on the butters. One, the design. You know, I've said it several times in this video, the the design and the quality of the print on this fast side, it's breathtaking. It, it really is. And it has that fuller feel that I like, you know, a little bit thicker, just slightly heavier, which is my preference. So three and a half all day on those. I'm actually going to go with a four on the uh, Viper R's. The green bags, I mean, they've been my favorite. They've been a staple in my switch bag. I've played with them many a times, and I suggest you try them too because if you're going to go to a local switch, there's going to be at least one or two other people that has them, and you might have to throw them anyways. So to get used to them, and then you'll be better at that time. Uh, the butterflies, I'm going a little bit lower. I'm going to go with a three-bagger on those just because I don't have the experience with them, but I'm actually considering taking my uh, green vipers out of the bag and putting the butterflies in there because I do want to play with them a lot more. 
I want to see, you know, how much it does break down if it does stay fuller yeah. and see how, how well they do compare with the Viper R's. Yeah, and the good thing about, you know, like you just mentioned, when you do go to Switches, these are probably going to be the easiest bags to get your hands on and try before you buy because somebody's going to have them at your local Switch, and uh, you might not want to because you'll probably end up buying them. <laughs> All right, will these bags make you better? Probably not. I don't think a, a bag is going to, you know, make you better, but if there's a bag out there that's going to make you better, it's the Viper R. You know, everything that we've talked about in this video, I'll need to get into it. It offers everything you need in a portable bag. I honestly think they will make you better, both of them. Just because they're so forgiving and when they land, they land flat. You're not going to have any kick. Uh, the, the Viper R's, you got to get used to holding a floppy bag and throwing a floppy bag. I understand that, but that's where the butterflies come in now. Okay. You don't have to worry about such a floppy bag, and it's going to play the same, just a tad bit faster and, what, two grams heavier. Right. So I, I think that just, you know, how forgiving they are and the, you know, chance that they're going to fall in the hole when you throw them, it's got to make you better. Yeah, and that's what's great. You can see the difference between mine and Craig's preferences. You know, now that they finally came out with this butterfly with the carpet side, you know, they're, they're really starting to cater to every different thrower. Yeah, he never really did like the Viper R's I too did, much yeah. because just because of the floppiness. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's the same with like those game changers that, you know, I, I can't throw them just because I feel like they're just rolling out of my hand. I can't ever find a comfortable grip. You got to do the butterfly grip because you got to hold all those beads in there. So when you come back, yeah. the beads don't start shifting on you when you got to throw them. So that brings us to are they worth the cost? If you buy them when they release them, they're worth the cost. If money isn't an issue, then yes, they're worth the cost because it is such a great bag. Uh, honestly, if you're going to try to get into some competitions or some switches, you need to be experienced with these bags because, like we said earlier, there's going to be multiple people there with the same bags, and you might have to throw them. And it is something you got to get used to, I do believe. Yeah, I'm still trying to get used to them. So I think they're worth the money completely. Uh, you're going to get the Viper R's capable of every shot, everything you need it to. They're going to hold up. And the butterflies are also worth the money because you're going to get that wow factor when you pull them things out at you know the switch and people see that design and that quality print on there. And, you know, we all like to show off once in a while. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Yep. So I think you probably already know that we do recommend these bags, and we really do. Uh, they're, they're cheater bags. That's why they blew up. That's why they've been so popular. Yeah, absolutely. It, they're making average throwers just a little bit better. Yeah, I also recommend them. I like both sets. Still trying to get comfortable with the, the R's, but the butterflies, uh, absolutely recommend. I love these bags already. So we just want to end this with everybody's average or something. If you're going to be average, you may as well be average at Cornwall. And buy the flies so you can look good while you do it. <laughs>